Right, so this morning we're going to try and find a dog wash for the dogs. Lily looks like a little scarecrow. She's had some oil in her ears from a bit of wax, so yeah, <laughs> she needs a wash and Coco can have one too. But first, we've got to take you back in time a little bit to earlier on this week where we had a, a, a wee excursion. Well, we've been on a motorway now for approximately two and a half hours, but where are we going? You won't be excited by the response. Yep, you guessed it, we're going back to Anzi. More paperwork. Woohoo! It's a very long and very expensive journey. Yeah. Because we're literally going to go there for like a day, which is kind of, kind of annoying, very annoying. But it's necessary. We've already had a stop and we were bent over in uh, the boulangerie there on the airs. Oh, royally bent over 17 there. 17 euros. The two, um, two pounds chantelar and two quiche Lorraine. What? So we make sure to use the bin and the loose. Get and our money showers. Worth. But anyway, we'll see you in Etsy. Pretty wondering why we're back here and that is because I have to pick up my carte de séjour. And that's really the only reason. So anyway, let's get boogie. Let's go and queue and watch my heart rate and blood pressure go up. <laughs> Finally, we have the card. We have it. <laughs> it's in our possession. It's only taken us a million years to achieve. And a lot of stress. Got to do it all again in a year, but I don't think it's quite as convoluted the second time. So I think we're going to go and have a coffee and then we're going to head back possibly tonight or tomorrow morning. Thinking about going to Avignon. We'll give you another history lesson then, can't we? You seem to actually quite enjoy that last week, so why the hell not? We actually quite enjoyed it. We I enjoyed like filming it, it and uh, yeah. you're pretty good I at like doing history. the narration. Well. Before we get a Burger King, we're just gonna enjoy that here and chill for a bit. It was a mammoth drive and I'm in need of um, a bit of food and a bit of a chill. So we'll catch up with you in a bit. So we're actually on our way back down south because a certain girl has got some issues with her van. Her indicators are not working, uh, lots of stuff's not working, so she's got to take it into the garage. And I've got a feeling it might be more than just the day. Instead of going to Avignon, we're actually heading back down to Amy, just in case she has to stay in here for the night. She's going to be thrilled with that. <laughs> Mind you, so are we. Yeah, it's going to be a bit crowded. So yeah, we're now stuck in some lovely traffic. It's actually really quite hot here. I have no air conditioning and my window doesn't work. So here I am sitting in the traffic with my door open. I think you found out some information about it. I though, think it's been you? a big lorry fire. So they closed the road. Not really moved very far in the last half an hour. We've had a picnic. Beautiful thing about having your own van. Hop in the back. This is just a car park right now, so no issues there. But I'm a bit bored, so you know what happens when you go on holiday, you get bored. There's only one thing left to do. I spy with my little eye something beginning with T. Twat. <laughs> Don't even need to guess. Something beginning with W. Wanker. Is this the way it's going to be the whole time? I spy with my little eye something beginning with M. Motherfucker. <laughs> Now, you know what? I was quite happy reading. I don't need to play a game. That's one of the good things about not having little children. You're not a little child, so therefore I'm not playing a game. No, this really, we can. At least we're going to try and go. It looks like they're actually reversing all the lorries out from this road. Oh, fuck. What a nightmare. Anyway, it looks like we're actually on the move now, which is really good. There is supposed to be a dog wash local to here, so we're going to go. If it doesn't happen to exist, then it will be in the van. See you in a bit. Let's go. She wants it out. <laughs> well, how cool is this? Proper full on dog wash. Shampoo, shampoo. 
washed, not too happy about it, but they're cleaner, so that's good. Now the treats come out. Oh. Okay. Okay, so that's the grooming bit done. We are rather hungry and thirsty, so we are going to where, Charlotte? Well, it's either going to be grass or moujin, but I'm suspecting moujin because it's closer near to the forest we want to go to tomorrow but first of all let's go to Muja. I can't pronounce these towns it, it's like a tongue twister to me these town names you know so let's go do that who really is you crossed out bars okay so just found a, a space here in Muja because I can't pronounce it and reverse back use my little reverse camera which I use here and saw the railings behind but didn't see the wooden pole in front of it so just reversed into it and yeah dented my back door up so hopefully it's not too bad I'd rather not no but hey oh, shit happens like fucking daily with us isn't it yeah I know we're not alone Shit happens to many people on a regular basis, and that's exactly what it is. Damn it. Anyway, let's get our stuff together and go for a wander around this place. Muja is an ancient village perched on a hill, which was fortified in the Middle Ages. It is situated in the hills above Cannes. During the 19th century, it was integral in the production and supply of jasmine and roses to grass which is the perfume capital of the world. Fast forwarding to the 20th century, Moujan became the artistic centre of the Côte d'Azur. Artists were drawn to the spectacular light and air of tranquillity that the area offered. Surprisingly for a village of its size, it has the NACM, which is the notable museum of classic art of Moujan, which hosts collections by renowned artists such as Pablo Picasso, Henri Matisse and Degas. Picasso notably spent the last years of his life in Moujan, as you walk around Moujan, there are many sculptures of the artists who were inspired by the area. We have Cezanne, Van Gogh, and a giant head of Picasso. Something that we will definitely be returning for is the International Festival of Gastronomy, which is held every September. Over 100 chefs from around the world gather and share tips, hold demonstrations, and run workshops. Plus, it would be nice to return to visit on one of the 300 days of sunshine that Moujan actually has. We were on one of the 65 that didn't. Okay, so just found ourselves a little spot in a cafe to have a coffee. And I've gone for a hot dog as well. So we'll go for a bit of that because I'm quite hungry at the moment. But this place is absolutely stunning. Lily, I love crazy. Like a pillock that I am, I forgot to take the spare battery and the battery died. So anyway, we're gonna go and find somewhere else to park. I fancy somewhere nature, somewhere quiet to get a peaceful night's sleep. But first petrol. But we first have very, petrol. very few miles in the tank. Mind you, then again, we're going on a descent of 25%. Brakes are a problem, might be a problem, but. Yeah, 25%, that's pretty damn steep. I went down 30% when we first started doing van life, we went over to the theater and we ended up actually coming down a road that was 30 percent for was a little scary. quite a long time as well wasn't it um yeah red lights on the dashboard for the brakes brakes started going soft it was like 
<sighs> but that right. wasn't the worst one. I mean, talking about breaking experiences, again, before YouTube was a thing for us or even for Amy, we were coming down from the Alps and uh, we didn't know really. I mean, there were signs, but I don't know what they say. But, and Charlotte was probably on her phone or something, didn't notice, I just drove past them. But it was a 12% decline over six kilometers. And it didn't forgive, it just carried on at that steepness. Well, I had to pull over at three and a half kilometers because my brakes were smoking. Amy was behind us at that point, and she was a little concerned. She could smell the brakes. <laughs> we looked it up afterwards, and it's one of the most dangerous roads in France, if not Europe. So um, there have been, you know, some bus Multiple crashes, co coach, crashes, coach there. crashes there. And a lot of fatalities. So I'm glad yeah. we didn't read it before because I would have refused to go down that road. Yeah. But you can see how that would have happened. Definitely. There's no room for error. There's not even any pulling in no, places. Pulling I mean, I was lucky. Yeah. I found one place for me to pull in. But anyway, we've just got this 25% decline to do. I'm going to pitch up for the night and hopefully go for a nice walk in the morning. <laughs> I need to change my underwear. Park looks nice. Yeah. Okay, so we've managed to find this park up, which is absolutely beautiful. Taking the dogs for a quick walk as well. Um, but it's that time again. We know you, you love Charlotte's cooking sections. So what have you planned today? We have got roasted feta with sesame seeds and honey and a couscous. And it's one of my favorite dishes. Charlotte's made this one many times. It's a little bit messy, has to be said. Sometimes the coating goes well, sometimes it doesn't. I've got a, no I've got a stainless steel pan, because I bin my other one. So that will be fun. Mm -hmm. So can't guarantee the outcome, but it, <laughs> it will taste good either way. Also, I've had to make a little adaption for this one. I've had to extend the kitchen. So we've extended the table out to make sure we've got enough space to get messy. Let's see Charlotte get messy. We're going to cover it. Here, well, she's done an exceptional job of this. <laughs> wait until you, if you try cooking this, you wait and see, see what the results are like. Ooh. Well, that kind of did go a bit better than I was thinking it would because I was expecting a disaster with the um, sesame seeds and whatnot, but it went very well. You've done a fantastic job there, darling. Thank you. Got the coating just perfect. I mean, crispy, beautiful, awesome. So we will see you in the morning and you know, if we're gonna take the, the dogs for a nice walk in the morning um, and then we've got some stuff to do in the afternoon. But, um, but yeah, we'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Thank you.
So yeah, we just done our morning routine, which is our coffees and our biscuits. Got our stuff together. Just got to drop a couple of bins off to the bin conveniently here. And then take these two out for a nice walk so that they can get completely shitted up again after giving them a good wash yesterday. At least it's not muddy, but they'll bring back half the forest with them. Yes, I know you're, you're not happy that we're saying these things about you. They want to go out. So let's just shut up and get them out. Yeah. <laughs> let's just get Otherwise them out. Otherwise they won't shut up. Oh my god, you see this ant trail? I love ants, I love the way they create their little paths and stuff like that. Always reminds me of the movie A Bug's Life, when you get the, the stick fall in there. Yeah. Classic. So that's their little nest, just in there. They've been using this trail so much, that it actually looks like something humans would do with their, their paths that we're walking on now. It's mad, I love it. Also, I don't know if you can help us out. We see these things quite often oh, in fields that they're all over the place. Does anyone know what they're for? Is it for helicopters or planes to guide them in or something? I have no right idea. I mean, this one's literally right under a tree. So it just seems like a random thing, but I have no idea what it's for. So if you know, let us know. Did you hear the woodpecker? I love hearing that sound. Oh. I'm picking myself a few flowers for a little posy in the van. Yeah, there are like millions here and they're just too pretty. So I have picked a couple of these flowers. I know eh, maybe not supposed to do that, but there were millions and I actually really want to know what these two flowers are. I know you've got apps and stuff nowadays for kind of identifying flowers, but I do, I've got books and I, I'm old school. I still like to go and look in my book and work out which which these are, much in the same way as we've got one for insects as well, actually. And I would like to identify them. Come on, come on. He does really? that to me too. He really thinks he's rallying the troops by clapping at us. Since his troops consist of girls, don't think that works. I'm royally fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so just stumbled across this random bivouac that somebody's made. There's even a fire pit with wood in. I'm not gonna be lighting it because it seems a bit wrong with all this wood around. That would not be clever. Aesthetically, I love it. So we're gonna sit down and have our coffee Could here. Could this be our new home? Yeah, bivouac fire. life, what I do you reckon? Flowers. I used to do that when I was in the Scouts and the Ventures and stuff like that. We used to make bivouacs and actually live in them. We used to actually put um, ferns over the top as uh, protection. That was great fun. Someone's done a reasonable job of doing this. Yeah, someone's definitely had a party. You can see all the uh, confetti, confetti on the floor. Easy. Maybe this was a do-it-yourself wedding. <laughs> no, don't do that. Oh, no, God. Twig up my bum. Nice. Do you know what? We put the coats on because it's literally been cloudy like this for the last like five days. So yeah, the batteries have gone from full down to 50% because there's just been no sun. I mean, I'm not saying it's cold by the coat because it's not. Um, hence the reason I've got to take it off because I'm a bit warm. Coffee's is much better. Oh God, you've just helped yourself to the whole treat. Oh dear. Oh no, there's a bit there. Coco, you're all right, you're lucky. 
That's unlike you, Lily. You don't normally sneak things. When we used to come on holiday, we tended to stick to coasts, yeah, seas, towns. Things. So actually, yeah, you saw that and it was all beautiful. It was lovely. Great, great summer holidays. But actually, now we have a chance to explore behind where the Riviera is, back into the, the hills and the mountains, well, the Estoril Mountains, for example. Just a different world. You don't necessarily think, when you think of the Riviera, you don't actually think of these kind of forests and national parks and that that exist back here. So, yeah, you don't really expect it, but you can kind of see where the artists, there's so many artists, as you've seen in Mujin. What? The inspiration here is incredible, and you can completely see why mm. so many artists have got renowned pieces of work from this area there is no lack of inspiration here put it this no. way but anyway talking about looking nice next week or this week coming on tuesday it's charlotte's birthday Yay. and she's 58 and looking good on it <laughs> not looking too bad for 58 so no it's her birthday and three days later is our wedding anniversary and so We've got a bit on this week, you know, things we want to do and celebrate and enjoy. So, little heads up, there might not be a video next week. There might be, there might not be. So yeah, if you don't get to see a video pop up next Monday evening, you will know that we are taking a week off. Yeah, join us the following week. So don't, mm -hmm. don't, you know, go anywhere else. We will be back. It's only one I week. I don't think there's anything wrong, because it's not. Celebrations that will it probably include a family-sized pack of crisps. <laughs> Woohoo! I think it will involve champagne and it will involve some flowers and you've already picked them. That's your birthday posy. That's flowers, my birthday by the way. posy. Yes, yeah, your birthday posy. My illegal birthday posy. Yes, you criminal. Anyway, so we're gonna leave you at that anyway. Um and we will see you this week or next week. Bye for now. Bye for now. The dogs have killed my flowers, they've stood on them. <laughs> what are you barking at? <laughs>